a second because we're going to kick this thing off. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you for knowing that we're getting going. How's everybody doing today? It's a hard question because everyone has a different answer. Sorry. <laughs> well, welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Sponsors, why don't you guys come on down and let's just line all of you up. Let's, let's do this different this time. I think we could just literally go in a line, and this would save a whole bunch of time. So let me do this. Let me give everyone the quick lesson on the microphones. One button turns it on, and you'll see it red. One more button, it'll turn green, and that means that you're unmuted. So when you're red, that means that you are muted. When you hit that left button, you will be unmuted. So you're going to wait. So you're going to want to make sure it's on and muted until you're talking. All right, you guys ready? Everybody ready? If you're ready to learn something today, make some noise. All right. First and foremost, so that I don't forget this, because I forget this all the time, the guy right here, you're going to want to all give a round of applause to Dave Stewart and his team, D. Stewart Productions. They are not only shooting photos and doing video, but they actually do a four-camera live stream full production on the fly. So he's like pan to camera left, and then his guys pan to a different camera. So the live stream, guys, if you're watching this on live or if you're watching the replay, thank you guys. All of this will be uploaded by next week to our YouTube page. If you follow Orlando Real Producers, you can actually watch a pretty high-quality version of every single masterclass we've done since the start of the pandemic. Thanks to Dave Stewart Production and D. Stewart Productions. Can you all give the, him a round of applause one more time? He doesn't get enough love for how he shows up early, stays late, makes sure our sound's good. And by the way, if you've ever been to one of our events where the sound was not good, we most likely did not follow Dave's recommendations. So like if you were at the Orpies any year, we should have let Dave do all the sound and a few other places. So anyway, thank you, Dave. So we've got some sponsors that made today happen. Actually, let me start with Welcome everybody to Masterclass Orlando or Masterclass CFL. Still getting used to the name change. Well, this is our 59th, 59th session of Masterclass. Is that pretty cool? It was about six and a half, maybe almost seven years ago that we decided that there wasn't really a place where agents could get together and learn from the best of the best without an ulterior motive. Like there were a few brokerages where you could go hear their top producers or a few other places you could do things, but usually somebody had something to sell you. They were trying to recruit you, they're trying to sell you something. This is with no ulterior motive. So we have nothing to sell you. We don't have any political or board affiliation. We have no affiliation with any brokerage or anything that we're trying to sell. However, Orlando Real Producers, y'all know what Real Producers is? Make some noises if you do, or some of you. If you don't know what it is, we make a magazine about and for the top 500 agents in Central Florida. It's been about seven years running and we host four private events socials for the top 500 every single year, including things like the Orpies that we just got off of. But what we realized years ago was that just hosting parties that everyone's like, how do I get an invite? Why wasn't I invited? And we're like, go sell more. We decided to put the people that make the top 500 on a stage to teach exactly what they're doing to any agent that wants to come. So is that pretty cool? Because it's been working pretty well, I think. So Thank you to everyone that's ever spoken, that's ever attended. This thing keeps rolling, and we're going to roll out a new thing for next year. But we still have one more session. If you pull your phones out right now, in fact, could you all just hold your phones up real quick, just show them to me? You want to pull your phones out? And, and real quickly, just visit Masterclass CFL as in Central Florida. Make sure you're typing this in as a website, not Googling it. Earlier, we had some confusion. MasterclassCFL.com. And when you go there, that should, if I didn't screw this up, take you to next month's session, which is our Movember session of Masterclass Orlando. This is our third annual women's panel, and I decided that the men need some representation too. So next month for Movember, we're doing a men's panel, and we have currently four, but we will have five men that rank in the top 40 in Central Florida real estate, just like the women are ranking all in the top 40. So they all sold a ton of real estate. And interestingly enough, this wasn't on purpose, but all of them are under 40, which I also think is kind of fascinating. So um, you come out next month, the funds will go to the Movember Foundation, which helps men's, I think it's mental health, testicular and prostate cancer. Don't quote me on it. This month though, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month and all the funds from today are going to the Gina McReynolds Foundation team. Gina, can y'all give them a round of applause? So quickly how it works. I think we've raised a little over $1,000 so far uh, because a lot of you guys came here for free. Let's just be honest. So, and we only charge 10 bucks. So if you would like to give a donation to Gina McReynolds Foundation, which is a local charity that helps local women that are battling breast cancer. In fact, one of our partners 
over the last few years was actually battling it when we decided to start giving the money to them instead of a national organization. And so if you have any desire to make an extra donation, let me give you a page you can go to right now and we'll donate everything that comes through today. And that's really simple. It's paypal.me slash Orlando Real Producers. Paypal.me, not dot com. I know it's weird. Paypal.me, like you're paying me. I know it sounds weird. Slash Orlando Real Producers. We will pay everything that gets donated, as weird as that just sounded, uh, to the Gina McReynolds Foundation. Anyway, we've got a handful of sponsors that make this thing happen. We've got about 80 preferred partners. So if you meet someone in the room that does anything other than real estate, they're not here by accident. They didn't bring bagels or donuts. They're all badasses, and they support real producers on multi-year contracts. So every single affiliate in this room is referred and vouched for by a top 500 producer. That means you need to know them and you should know them. About 10 of them stepped up to make today happen in this awesome theater and uh, with all this video and everything else that's going on. So I'm going to give each of them a minute, 60 seconds to introduce themselves, tell you a little bit about them. It's not long enough for them to explain everything. So can everyone here agree to just make sure you go follow anyone that you didn't know on social when they get up and talk or connect with them after? Can you all do that if you can say, oh, yeah? Sweet, we got you all on video saying that, so I'm going to hold you to it. Uh, let's just kick this off. We'll start with Brandon Blake from The Staging Company. What's yeah. up, guys? Aaron might not have anything to sell you, but I certainly do. Um, staging's back. Uh, yeah, buy staging. You're going to make way more in the transaction than we will. Um, right now, the data that we're seeing, for every dollar that you put into staging, you get about $30 back in the transaction. Um, and as an agent, you, of course your percentage of that so it's a win-win it's a win for you it's a win for your client it's a win for us um and we love that um so hit the qr code talk to kirsten talk to me uh go to the staging.co um yeah in a market where days on market's going up houses are sitting uh quite a bit longer than they used to we got to compete if you're on page 38 uh of zillow nobody's going to see your listing so we can help with that all right guys thanks for being here all right, Thanks. let's keep this going. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Gilda. I'm with Unique Title. We are a full-service title company here. We do uh, real estate transactions from residential, commercial, construction loans, HELOCs, refinances, you name it, we can do it. Um, our team is fully bilingual. We also have over 50 years of combined experience in real estate, so we can assure you're going to be Okay, good. That's Sammy was tough, so I'm making sure. <laughs> so we have over 50 years of combined experience in real estate, so we can assure you transaction is going to close clean and smooth. Also, <coughs> we have an amazing marketing team that is going to help you succeed in this crazy market. We offer marketing tools and different strate uh, strategies to help you uh, grow. So please connect with us on social media at Unique Title, or please come chat with us after the conference. Thank you. Hello, I am Jocelyn. I'm with Home First Lending. It is wonderful to be here in the sea of pink. Everybody looks wonderful. Um, wonderful to see so many familiar faces and looking forward to meeting a lot of the new faces that I see in the room as well. Um, I think today we're hearing from five of the most dominating women here in Central Florida, which is really exciting to hear how they're so successful. I think one thing that we can agree or that they probably will agree with hearing from them is that your partnerships really matter when it comes to your success. And so at Home First Lending, we want to be that partner with you. Uh, we want to help you grow your business. I think interest rates, as we know, are super high right now. It's the talk around town, right? We've seen interest rates triple in 18 months. So let's talk about resolutions about how we can still get your buyers into homes. Temporary buy downs, permanent buy downs are an awesome solution. And we have these options. It's about getting creative in a market like this. And Home First Lending has been around for 16 years. We're local to Central Florida. And what we want to do is we want to partner with you and get creative, come up with other ways to lend in such a weird time, and also help you guys. Um, grow your business, but also set yourself up for success as we go into next year. So come and see me afterwards. I'd love to talk to you again, Jocelyn with Home First Lending. Good morning, everyone. My name is Steve Bell, and I'm a partner with Harding Bell International. We are part of the worst, most boring industry you can uh, be a part of, but like Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas, tax season's coming up. So if you need a tax guy, you need someone that can, that understands your business. Uh, we, like I said, we're a full service CPA firm. We specialize in work with realtors, investors, specifically foreign investors. That's kind of a niche of ours. Uh, so happy to help you guys out. If you want someone to 
just review your taxes, maybe your, your situation, you're not sure if you can save more money, we're happy to do a free consultation. Just reach out to me um, on social or mention to Aaron and he'll connect you with me. Uh, but anyways, great to see everyone. Have a great day. Good morning, everybody. So my name is Ivan. I'm with the home team powered by Movement Mortgage. So we're your big bank with a local lender field. Um, that means that we are our own servicing company. We service about 95% of the loans that we, that we fund for you. But that means is that we're a little bit more flexible. We're very, very, very flexible and aggressive when it comes to your approvals. We are a solution-based lender. So if you have one of those deals that have not been approved or nobody can approve, let us take a look at it. We're going to find a solution so we can make it happen for you. Um, two of my ladies are down here, Fran Francesca and Priscilla. Um, come talk to us at the end. Also, um, for your clients that are a little bit more particular, if, if um, they're on budget constraints, if it's been a little bit hard for them to find them that house because they're looking for a front porch or something specific, um, we may have a solution for you. Um, so come talk to us after that. Um, we are solving all of your um, needs for now. Awesome. Good job. Hey, everybody. Everybody awake? Y'all look beautiful, beautiful. Like I want a picture up here. Where's Vic when we need him? Anyway, hey guys. <laughs> I know. There you go. I should. So Heather Hurry, Pillar to Post, the Jeff Mackey team, your home inspections and commercial inspections partner. So I just wanted to share with you. We were talking about a little bit about stats today, and I'm going to say, guess what? The market is as strong as you want it to be. So keep working what you're working and keep doing what you're doing. We're at about 97% of the inspections that we did last year at this time. So I just want to, you know, like be encouraged. Be encouraged because I feel like it's, we're moving into a place where there's going to be good things on the horizon. It's when things are competitive and challenging is whenever the top, you know, like the it, it moves to the top. Those that are here to in it to win it will move to the top. So I wanted to encourage you. Also, my ask this week is if you have an upcoming listing or an open house, please get in touch with me. My IG is hurry for real estate, F O R, not a four. And we're gonna offer a free virtual open house with a measured wall and floor plan and a permit property history report. We're launching a new program. The first one's on me, baby. So y'all better let me know. And then after that, we'll see where it goes. But I just want to offer that out to you and have a great masterclass. Glad to see you all. All right, good morning. My name is Chance Kelly. I'm here with Miracle Movers of Florida. You guys all look fantastic in your pink. I've been waiting to rock these shorts. So thank you, Aaron, for that. Um, I just want to let you guys know, you guys sell houses, people buy them, people move out of one into another. I am your guy. I am a one-stop shop. I am owner-operator. There is no handing off. There is no pawning off. They deal with me from start to finish. I'm the one who does the on-site, who books it, and who sees that they get satisfied throughout the entirety of their job. I also offer storage, so if you have any clients that are looking to put some stuff away for a while, please feel free to contact me. I look forward to meeting all of you after this. Thank you, and have a great day. I'm the last because I just ran in here. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Shay Walker with Shay Walker Photo. Hey y'all. Um, y'all look so cute today. You guys are a vibe. I don't feel like pitching anything. You can follow me at Instagram at Shay Walker Photo. I really just wanted to express my gratitude for all the women in this room, those who came to learn and be inspired by the panel, the panelists who are going to tell their stories as women business owners, which is really badass. Um, and I think this community has been so wonderful to me, everyone that I've been able to work with, these women who show me support, I get to hype them, capture them, make them feel confident. Um, and I think that's what this community is about as women business owners, is using our power to empower others. And I think it's really beautiful, and I hope to network with some of you guys today and meet you, and happy masterminding. Thanks. All right. And then we've got, we've got two of our sponsors that sponsor every month that weren't able to make it here today. So I want to give them a one, two, three clap. On the count of three, can we get a one, two, three clap for Monica and her team at Assured Partners? One, two, three. Let's do one for Vic DeVore, DeVore Design. He couldn't make it, but he did make sure the coffee made it, which that's pretty awesome. So let's give him a giant clap on the count of three. One, two, three. All right. And uh, let's give it up for all the sponsors, including our supporting sponsors. We got Central Florida Building Inspections, branding by Joe, 
Richmond American Homes, and then the Apex Group with Guaranteed Rate donated $250 each and every month. They're our charity sponsor. They give at least $250 to whatever the charity is. So because of them, we're actually a little over $1,000. But if you go to paypal.me slash Orlando Real Producers, like – how many of you guys could give at least 10 bucks to women battling breast cancer here in Central Florida? Raise your hands. Raise them really high. It's okay. Don't be embarrassed. All right. Everyone that has their hand up, just go to paypal.me slash Orlando Real Producers. You could even go Orlando Real Producers slash 10, and that will actually make it a $10 donation. But paypal.me slash Orlando Real Producers will donate everything that comes through today in addition to 100% of the ticket sales. So let's get this thing started. Y'all ready? Y'all came here to hear from these ladies, right? A couple of you? All right. <laughs> Let's start with Lindsay Voss. Lindsay was born and raised. By the way, is it pretty cool that all five of these women have been on the cover of Orlando Real Producers because they all sold 40 to $55 million last year? Can you give them all right? Like, I don't know if we've ever had all people that have already done their story. So if you want to read any of those stories, we'll get you a copy of their uh, edition if you email us. Uh, all right, Lindsay, she's born and raised in Coral Springs. She came to Orlando to go to UCF and graduated in 2008. She joined her hu husband's real estate firm in 2014, and she's been knocking it out of the park ever since. She's in the top 50 out of 24,000 plus agents in Central Florida, and I believe she has been for many, many years in a row. She personally sold $42 million last year. She sold $125 plus million just over the last four years, soon to be 40 under 40. Oh, we should do that addition. Is that a suggestion? I just realized that. Top 10 mom, according to her two-year-old. And uh, the rest of it is not her bio. So let's give a giant round of applause to Lindsay Voss. <laughs> I almost read everything you wrote. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Melissa Rodriguez is known throughout the industry as rock star Mel. Due to her extensive industry knowledge of commercial and land development that distinguishes her year over year, she's a leading expert and is ranked in the top 1% of brokers in Central Florida. And this is all selling land. Sold over $40 million worth of land last year. Is that pretty cool? If you think that's awesome, say, oh yeah. She's been recognized by NAREP. Uh, as one of the top 1% Hispanic agents in all the U.S. Multiple times, she's in the Hot 100 in Orlando Magazine, top 50 real estate agents in Aura. She's been in the top 25, 30 agents in Greater Orlando in our ranking every year for I don't know how many years. We've only done them since 2016. Uh, and she's got a lot of interesting stuff in her bio, but let's just give a giant round of applause to Melissa Rodriguez. And all of you ladies, by the way, you ladies can come up and join us. Come join us. Grab a spot. I, didn't, I should have said that. As we call your name, come grab a seat so we can start this thing. Um, all right. Sorry. Kristen is a native of, C of Central Florida, a dedicated mother of two. She boasts over a decade of real estate experience. Her profound understanding of local real estate, coupled with her unwavering commitment to research and innovation, has made her a trusted advisor to her clients. She's held the title of the number one agent of COA Banker Agents multiple times in Orlando for both 2019 and 2020. She's consistently ranked in the top 2% of the network nationwide. She's now at Century 21 Integra. And with a remarkable track record of assisting over 600 families for over $178 million in sales and over $40 million plus in sales last year. I don't know the exact number, but I know it was over $40 million and it'll show up when the flyer pops up. Let's give a giant round of applause for Kristen Green Vote. And Abby, which part of your bio should I read? No, I'm kidding. Uh, Hold on. She's got a really long one, but I, I saved the best part for you guys. The Abby Nelson Group is one of the premier teams in Central Florida, offering experience, local knowledge, effective marketing with 100% dedication. Abby Berkowitz Nelson's excellence has given her a steady referral source since 2004. I'll, I'll give some stuff that's not in her bio. She's ranked in the top 25 agents in Orlando Real Producers probably every single year since 2016, which is the first year we ranked it. So she probably did it even longer than that. She sold over 40. Uh, is it 44? Did I make $44 million plus last year? Runs a team based in Winter Park. Badass rock star agent. She was like in the first 10, 12 covers of Real Producers, which I thought was really cool. These ladies have almost all been on in the last year or so. So she's graced the stage before, but let's welcome Abby Nelson. All right. And then Fernanda. Sorry. 
Where did I put yours? Oh, here we go. Fernanda Negromonte is a highly accomplished real estate broker. She sold over $50 million worth of deals in 2022, which really solidified her reputation as a top performing broker. She cracked right into our top 50 out of nowhere, I feel like, just over the last few years. And uh, I think that's amazing. She's originally from Brazil. And I'm going to skip a lot of this because you guys already know she's a badass rock star agent. You don't sell $50 million by accident. Anyone here from Nova, though? She got a squad here. So let's give a giant round of applause to Fernanda Negramonte, who won our Broker of the Year last year. Y'all ready to roll? Can we give one more round of applause for all these rock star ladies? And I'll just say it one more time. If you feel so inclined to go to paypal.me slash Orlando Real Producers, anything that you donate, we'll give straight to the Gina McReynolds Foundation, which they will give straight to a local women or family with local women that are battling breast cancer currently here in Central Florida. So, all right, let's start this thing. And ladies, don't forget the left button turns your mic on. So when it's green, you can talk. And when it's red, you're muted. Let's start with just your story. What'd you do before you got into real estate? How did you get started? And what's your business look like today? Let's, uh, let's start down there with Kristen. Or does she not have a mic yet? Oh, so they, sorry. My sponsors put them all. Let's say, we'll start with you, Fernanda. If you hit that left button so it turns green. And then one reminder I'll give each of you to the middle turn to speak directly into the mic because they might hear you, but the people on Zoom won't if you hold it too far away. So, Fernanda, how did you get it started and how's it going today? What's your business look like today? Well, first, I would like to thank everybody for, you know, coming up here. And um, when I started, it was... So I moved from Brazil when I was 18 years old. And um, when I was driving here, I was thinking, you know, what I'm going to say here today that is going to inspire you guys. Because at the end of the day, I feel this is why we are all here today. So some of you guys that have been in the interest for a long time or that just got in, like, how are you going to relate and how we're going to inspire you to do better and to get where you want to be, right? So I moved here 18 years ago. I mean, when I was 18 years old, that was a long time ago. That was more than 18, 18 years ago. And I didn't speak any English. I moved here for, to follow the American dream. And I work in everything that you can imagine. And as I was driving here, I was just thinking about that. I work from cleaning homes to uh, waiter, you name it. And, uh, but I always had the dream to have my own business. And uh, I decided to take my real estate license because a friend of mine, she took her license at the time and she's like, you have to get your license. You'd be like so good at it. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure you're gonna do well. So I was like, okay, let's give this a try. And that was 2008. Everybody was quitting real estate. And I was like, you know, I think I can do this. <laughs> and I remember I was selling condos for like $28,000. And we were working so hard to make not so much money, but it was amazing because I feel like I learned so much that, you know, I can go through every phase of this business kind of like having an idea like what to expect, right? So that's how I started, you know, and then, um, I don't know, let's see. Let's see Tell us what it, your team looks like today. Yeah, uh, are you a team? Are you a solo agent? Yeah. So after working for about like five years in a small boutique brokerage, uh, I decided to open my own brokerage and my idea was just to be by myself. I didn't really wanna like grow a team or none of that, but then within the next like, mm, I would say two, three years, I started having, you know, like Asians coming up to me and they're like, hey, can you like be my mentor? So we started growing our team. Today I own Nova Real Estate. We have about 28 Asians in our team. Um, love, teach them, mentor them, and I'm so proud of them because most of my agents are relatively new, but they're doing amazing. And uh, if you guys, you know, have any questions or need anything, feel free to reach out to me. I'm here to help. Love it. And Abby, let's go to you. Oh, let's pass the mic down. Sorry that we have to play, uh, we have to pass them around a little bit. Tell us about how you got started in real estate and what your team looks like today. So I'm even going to point out, like, I feel like you've arrived as a realtor when your headshot, if they pull it up, like, doesn't match you anymore. <laughs> 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 so 
when it pulls up, like that's me on that side. I just, I don't think I look like it anymore. Well, there's a lot of them if that makes you. <laughs> so, people all arrived. <laughs> I have arrived. Um, so I started in 2004, pretty much fresh out of school. And, uh, you know, throughout college, um, I went to Rollins. You know, everyone was like, what do you want to do? And my dad and my boyfriend, husband now, um, were like, you should go into real estate. But I'm kind of the person that doesn't like to be told what I should do. So I was like, no, 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 I don't want to do that. So then I went overseas for a little bit just um, to travel before I, you know, got into work. And I came back and I had this great epiphany, right? Like, I'm going to be a realtor. <laughs> but because it was my idea, right, then I could go after it. Um, so that's kind of how I started. So I started in 04 and I just, you know, I think it was, um, you know, the market was booming, but I was so young. I didn't have the relationships. I didn't have the understanding. And um, I never got complacent in the market. So when it shifted a few years later, I just shifted and said, okay, got to learn something new. I mean, I had already been, and I think I'm always in learning mode. I mean, today I'm in learning mode always. And so I shifted with it and, uh, became unintentionally known as like an REO agent, which was never what I wanted to be, but that's where the market took me. And uh, I still to this day have not sold as many transactions, right? Way more volume, but the number of transactions as I did back in like 2010, right? So still under 20 million that was, but it was 176 transactions. At least Crazy. they pay you better, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Working smarter, not harder. So always been a, a grinder, and um, you know my team has shifted definitely throughout the years. So right now we're um, small and mighty, which I just right now is what I need at the moment, and I'm liking it. Um, so it's really me. I'm the producing agent. All right. Um, I have staff and help, and I have one showing assistant, showing agent who helps me in the field. But uh, the rest is just staff in the office that helps me and supports me and my my clients. Love it. How about you, Lindsay? Hello, everyone. Well, I graduated, like you said, in 2008 from UCF, and I was lucky enough to have a job straight out of college. I was the director of marketing and events for the Oviedo Winter Springs Chamber of Commerce. I did that for about three, four years, and then I went on to do membership sales at Tuscola Country Club for about three, four years. So my husband, he's been in real estate for over 20 years, you know, I think it was just kind of the natural progression to to join real estate. And, you know, I saw being self-employed, you'll never work harder in your life, but it's so much more rewarding. And, you know, having worked for different companies prior to that, like it was just, I don't know, you're you're doing all this stuff for, for somebody else. And it, the bottom line is you weren't even like appreciated. So um, this was kind of the natural progression to go into real estate and I was very fortunate because I had a huge sphere of influence um, coming from two like membership based organizations. I had developed so many relationships with so many people. Um, so switching into real estate, you know, was a little hard at first because everyone knows a realtor <laughs> or like a hundred of them. So, uh, <laughs> but, but I was able to, to do it and you know, uh, 2014, I had one sale. So let's say I, I started, really started in 2015. And it's been growing ever since. And we have a family brokerage. Um, so my husband's a broker. And then uh, my brother-in-law, Evan, has joined forces recently. And, um, but yeah, we are a small boutique family real estate firm. And I just like to focus on, I liked your small and mighty. <laughs> Love it. Um, really just like to focus on customer service and, you know, really being, you know, the one that, you know, my customers get to see and talk to and, um, yeah. Love it. Mel. Hi, everyone. I, Is this on? I think um, you're good. I feel honored to be up here with the presence of these beautiful women and, um, I started uh, 20 years ago. My background is hotel and restaurant institutional management. I have a degree in culinary arts and um, basically started about 20 years in, in 2004 when everyone knows the market was crazy insane. And to get someone to even call you back was just so difficult because they had multiple offers. They were double dipping. So started in 2004, did my first real estate transaction as a, um, as a purchaser, bought, bought our first home together. 
And when I acquired the house, I saw the commission and I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is insane. I'm, I better have my real estate license. So from that point, um, I acquired a land deal and what we purchased that property for, we, we acquired 34 acres and the 34 acres that we bought was like 500,000 and we did a minor lot split and we divided the property into three. And so what we acquired the 34 acres for, we made it all up in the first 10. So I was hooked at that point. I said, you know, I, I really don't want to get into the residential side of, uh, of things. I want to get into the commercial and land and, and understand the, the, the land aspect because that's where I, I knew I can be an expert at. And that's when I started was in, in, in 2004. I've seen the market. I've seen it go crazy. I've, I've been there with you where I got into the REO industry and people started to say, hey, Mel, you're, you're the bank asset. You sold, you know, 50 condos. And like you said, we were doing, you know, 50 condos and, and, and making $7 million. Um, so I've been through the entire highs and lows of the market. And here I am 20 years later sharing my story with you guys that you do have to be invincible. You have to, you have to kind of pivot with the market uh, in order to to be successful today love it Kristen left button hello okay. there you go sorry we got to do a transaction together too which was really cool um, a couple years ago but I started in 2008 um, when it was really really hard and there was so much to learn at that point which I feel like they've they've hit on so it was a great educational point um, was not closing a lot, but was learning every different scenario, all sorts of um, things that I don't know that you would learn firsthand any other way. So now I feel like we're head as we're heading into something that feels unfamiliar like that, advice would be to just like take all of these learning opportunities because this stuff isn't going to go away. It doesn't change that much, but it will season you so that you're ready the next crazy boom um, to kind of take off. But I have been a single agent um, from 2008 until 2021. Um, I was with a small mom and pop and kind of self-taught, taught every, you know, learned as I went. And then I joined Coldwell Banker in 2019 and I stayed there until 2021. Um, and then I was approached by Century 21. They wanted me to kind of create a team, which, you know, once we dug into what that looked like. That wasn't something I was comfortable doing. So we actually have a group. Um, there's 20 agents, some are new. Most are either past clients of mine or people that I had relationships with before that have gotten into the industry. And we're really just like collaborating and sharing ideas, sharing information, um, and just kind of being a leaning, a shoulder to lean on because it is a single player sport and it can kind of get, you know, when you get down in the weeds, it's nice to have somebody be like, okay, come on, it's not that bad, let's go. So that's kind of where we've evolved. I love it. You know, I don't know which question that I'm about to, oh, y'all can give them a round of applause. That, they all deserve it. So I don't know which question this will fit in with, so I'll stay with you, Kristen, if you're good. I want to ask you about the ducks. Uh, I guess the best way of asking this question, and this wasn't on the list of questions, so I'm going to ask each of you, hopefully. I want to hear what some of the best things you're doing to keep in touch with either your past clients or to get new to get new clients, either, either or, whichever you prefer to talk about. Give us like one or two of your favorite strategies for your past clients or new clients, but I specifically want you to talk about the ducks. So I bought a Jeep um, solely for the purpose of ducking. <laughs> it's dumb, but I did. And so it's branded with all of my stuff. I don't drive it full time, but I do make um, it a purpose to drive that occasionally. And I have branded little rubber ducks. I don't know if you know about the Jeep culture, but they duck all the time. Um, tell, tell them what that is. Tell, what? tell people what, so that oh, don't know what ducking um, is. So I don't get it. I don't, under, I don't really know. They just will leave ducks on other Jeeps. Um, and it's like, there's all sorts. It gets very weird. Like I have Disney ones. If we're at Disney, I'll leave Disney ones on um, Jeeps that we find. But I also made like a little postcard that's just like duck, duck, Jeep. That's a saying that goes with it. And it's like, I really like your Jeep and you leave a duck. Um, her, and I'll, sh I'll share what I found fascinating. Her postcard has her in a wrapped Jeep, which has her logo and her branding and whatnot. It's like a, she leaves this item that has her branding and whatnot on it. They collect them. That is for 
you know, yeah. it's like a collectible thing. You and leave people them in leave the a dash. duck on other Jeep owners. So she's got this thing that she can basically go out anytime she sees a Jeep and make a touch with and someone just because of their car that and doesn't even need to run into the person or see the person. And I get so many like followers from that and maybe they're not interested, but like they just feel like it's fun. I have little kids. I have a 10 year old and a five year old. So it's like an easy way if I need like help. They love it and we'll go out and we just like run through the Target parking lot trying to find Jeeps, but it's really fun. So, so <laughs> weird, if anybody that buys a Jeep, let them know we sent you. <laughs> uh, anything you're, else you're doing to keep in touch with your past clients? Since I we're mean, get this everything one. right now is full court press. So, like, there's nothing that. Can I'm you not give doing. us like a, some examples? Run, run through um, some of the things you do. So, like last year, I usually around the holidays, I do something kind of crazy. Which, in this setting, I'm not very like weird. But um, for my people, it's kind of on brand. And I dressed up like a turkey. I've all my clients are mostly families with little kids, and I delivered a book, How to Catch a Turkey. Um, to all the families. <laughs> I pulled up to the first one. And I'm like, why am I doing this? like this is weird and dumb and like everyone loved it so much. It was so silly, but like it was just really, really fun. And now it's like, are you doing the turkey this year? And I'm like, oh God, I don't really want to, but if I have to, I, I still will. have your Grinch. Yeah, your Grinch I do the Grinch. Bowl. Yeah, we do the Grinch a lot. Um, well, I have little kids. So usually, you know, a lot of my clients are going to be families or people that have been referred through relationships with so, them. So, so Popeyes and interesting. Yeah, Popeyes, um, uh, mailers, newsletters, social media, all of it. I, I think you have to do all of it right now. Love it. Let's go to you, Mel. You know, I, I can't beat that. I, 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 I'm, I'm like so. <laughs> well, your people are buying right land. Now, so it's you know, a little. Like, <laughs> You Land's know, a little different. I, I, think I, I need to get a little corporate. What What are some ways that you're putting them around? What are some ways that you find your clients though, or that you keep in touch with them? How about that? Okay, so finding my clients, and if you could just talk into that mic oh, sure. for the internet so, people. So finding my clients, they're they're typically my national track home builders. So it, it's going and, and seeing what they're what they're currently marketing right now, what they've closed on in the Orlando Business Journal and touching base and congratulating them. And, and yesterday it was, was, was going to a groundbreaking on one of my uh, developers um, tracks of land that, that I had sold and I'd, 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 I brokered the deal on both sides and supporting them and letting them know I'm there and, and, and I want them to succeed and, and, and ask them what else are you, are you acquiring. So touching my database is, is honestly, is every single day for me because it's so competitive on the land side of it. Everyone wants to do a big land deal and you have to be present. You have to support them. You have to see what they're doing on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. So for me is showing up and, and, and bringing, unfortunately not a duck, but um, maybe a shovel and, 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 and saying, <laughs> you know, Hey, congratulations. And, and you're turning this dirt. So it's, it's constant with them. It, where do you, where do you meet them? So, or how did you first acquire these relationships? So, um, honestly, I, I first got the clients based on going after uh, some some land opportunities with the sellers and then establishing the relationship. But once I was able to list a land deal, was developers was reaching out to me and, 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 and establishing rapport with them, saying, I do have some opportunities that aren't on the market or what are you looking for and can I put you on my database and so every month is a touch up on touching touching base with them hey how are you underwriting your deals today are you in a different market how can I assist you um, are you acquiring any additional land are you developing after they develop some of these opportunities are BTRs so they cap it out oh I have an investor for that so I want them to know that I am not the jack of all trades, but I have a client for almost all your needs. So that's how I keep in touch with them to let them know if you build it out and you're going to cap it out, I have a REIT I'd like to put you in contact with. So it's always a, a not a monthly basis, but it's a double, it's a daily basis in, in keeping what, in, in touch with my clients. Love it. Lindsay. I do have to say, it's nice and refreshing to have, you know, somebody that doesn't do what most of us do on a daily basis. Like, it, it's interesting. And I mean, we're in real estate, right? Commercial, residential, what, like anything we can, you can always just learn. And anyways, I think it's, and, I think it's cool. And since you mentioned it, I'm going to just mention something real fast that she's one of the best people in this room for everyone to collaborate with. Mm -hmm. I've already, uh, she could tell you a little more about how she collaborates with the other top agents. Maybe I'll ask her that later. But I know that some of the top performing agents like in the top 20 in this area consistently do deals with 
Melissa, they or send their buyers back Thank and you. forth. I, she could probably explain better, but they refer stuff back and forth all the time within their expertise because they stay in their lanes and they both do or they all do a lot better because of that. Right. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I think so. you need to find your niche and, 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 and it's not that to stay in your lane. It's more is what's your niche. So once you have your passion. That's where you want to stay focused at. So I knew my passion, and, 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 and take this with all respect, it is not selling a house. I'm not emotional. I'm more of the, hey, can we get the deal done? Does the numbers make sense? How are we going to get the highest and best use? And I leave the residential to the, the, the wonderful people that are up here and out there for you to do. That is not my specialty, and I'll never want anyone that sends me a referral to feel like I would ever take a listing from you. That is not my intention. And I collaborate with, as he said, some of the top real estate agents that are on the top 20 that totally trust me with their clients. And if I feel if I can do it, I, 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 will, I, I will attend to your client needs. And then she'd send them the people that want houses because she don't want to do that. Absolutely, I don't um, want to do Lindsay, it. <laughs> Lindsay, go ahead. Sorry, I just, since no, you kind of you. teed That's it up, I, I had to mention it. <laughs> no, no, it's um, good. It's good. T talk about your, where you find your favorite ways to find clients and your favorite ways to keep in touch with your clients. So favorite ways to keep in touch is just constantly calling past clients, you know, really just genuinely wanting to know how they are doing, not asking for the sale, but just keeping that relationship alive. Um, and just, you know, I, I, ever since I started, I've been sending out like every month I send out a letter, a, a card on their home anniversary. So that's been like in a different way, I guess, to stay in touch with them. Um, and then of social media, um, I think social media has made it really nice to kind of keep in touch with them and like, let them like, you know, what's going on in their life. Like, you know, if somebody just had a baby or, um, somebody just got promoted or, you know, something like that. So I think social media can be a big tool, like just to see what, what's going on in their lives. And, you know, it kind of reminds you to call them too. <laughs> Love it. Um, you said home anniversary. Is that the anniversary of buying the home? Yes. Or selling a home. Even if it's a bittersweet sale, you know, I, I, I do still send it. <laughs> but, it. Um, but yeah, so I would say I just, you know, try and keep in touch with past clients. Um, lately, obviously having to pivot a little bit more and going back to the basics a little bit more just really blocking out time to to call those past clients and you know making it more of you know keep the relationship alive that's awesome so i got to give an idea on the home anniversary thing since you mentioned it but do you know that Publix will make a cookie cake and draw a house on it for pretty cheap and you could drop off a nice cookie cake on the home anniversary gives you a reason to go but there's one thing you could do to put on steroids is christina still in the room or is she at check-in still christina's right back so christina raise your hand Everybody that doesn't know Christina, you should meet her because she can help you put that idea on steroids by delivering the cookie cake with a piece of Cutco engraved with your name, number, logo that'll cut the cookie cake and stay in their house for the rest of their life. Probably multiple homes, Like my mom's had this stuff for 40 years. So you should go see Christina if you want some cool home anniversary gifts. I just a thought, sorry, that uh, she wasn't expecting that plug, but I couldn't help hearing the word home anniversary and not saying it. Abby, let's hear about how you keep in touch with your clients and your favorite uh, strategies for landing new ones. Oh, left left button until it's till you see a green circle. One, one more, one more. There you go. I think you're good. Is it turning off? Here, let's just switch it. Oh, this one's dead. Uh, let's switch one out. All right. This wasn't me. I was nervous about Yeah, it wasn't you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one thing we also are adding on this year to the home anniversary, like when it's their five-year anniversary, we're going to say send a, like a Home Depot gift card and be like, hey, you've been in your house now for five years, so it's either time to do some updates or give me a call. So a gift card to Home Depot and then a business card as well. So just like... That's really the big thing for me is just staying in touch with my past clients. Um, I always like to add a little humor into it, so that's one of the ways. But, I mean, um, last week we went through with the team, and we literally have a three pages of all the gifting that we do throughout the year for so many different reasons. Um, 
And it's just, it's, it's finding those moments, the, the ways that I use social media. Is can, you, can you share a few of the gift ideas just so people follow you? Yeah, I mean, um, so, so gosh, it's, it's, I don't, it's not to take advantage of a situation like this, but whenever you see something, like a lot of times when you see someone's lost someone, it's not intentional gifting, but I just, you know, sending something, I always go and I find a picture of their spouse or their pet or something like that and sending it to them. And it's not about posting that on social media. It's not about sharing that, but the bond that you create with your clients in those moments, I mean, I love the, you know, when they have a baby, those are my favorite ones and stuff like that. But it's, it's, it's finding something that's happened in their lives and being able to touch upon it. And that's, so the, those are the, not the, you know, when someone's lost someone, but those are the best types of gifting, like making it unique and about them, right? So those are the, the really strongest touch points that you can ever do with a client. So when you're on social media and you see something's happened in their life, their kid graduated college, their this has happened, they got a new dog, those, I love, when they, as anyone gets a new dog, we send out a little, like, um, you know, puppy package. And so those are the moments where you really build stronger relationships with your clients after the transaction, not about the transaction. And that's, that's strong for me. Um, so every month, like I am, I'm very tactical, right? Like I'm not the warm, fuzzy, charming realtor. I'm very tactical about my approach, more business oriented about it. And I'll get to a transaction and I'll be done. I'll be like, oh my God, what does my client even do for a living? Like that's how so focused on the transaction I get. So I have to make it a point where like I really stay in touch with my clients and continue to get to know them beyond. Me and my team, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but we literally put up a billboard on Turkey Lake Road and Sand Lake, that's where my office is. So I, I want people to like recognize me as a brand and um, that when they, that it's so funny because then I just start doing so much stuff lately that we feel that it's not important to our business, but at the end of the day, everything adds up. I start sending like postcards. I used to never do that before because in my head, I'm like, people are just gonna look at it, put it in the garbage, whatever. But I made it like with my picture, like really big over there. So now, like <clears throat> I actually get people calling me. I had this client one day and he was like, Hey Fernanda, I you you just sold like a couple homes here in my neighborhood. Uh, to be honest with you, I know so many Asians, but I really like what you're doing. Can you be here at my house today at five o'clock? I was like, yeah, sure. He sent me the address, um, and I'm fast. If you call me, I'll be there. I'll make it happen. You know. Um, so when I got there, it was a, a 2.1 million dollar home, and he was just like, this is the price I want to list when can you take your pictures? And that's it, you know, because you create your, your personal branding. And, um, and that goes along with social media. And, you know, I think everything that you do, it will add up that people will recognize you as an expert in the industry. But again, you have to back up, right, what, you, what you're putting out there. So you have to keep educating yourself, do your best for your client, and, um, to be honest, like I feel that 60 to 70 percent of my business, they're like all m m repetitive clients and referrals. And of course, today I have a team that I pass along some leads to them because you know people they 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 call the office, they call the for sale signs. Even a for sale sign will bring you so many clients. Open houses. There's so many things that you can do that when I get a new agent and they're like, I, I don't know where to start, like what should I do? I would be hosting open houses like every weekend. Because you know, like yeah, sometimes you know, it might be boring, you might get one or two people walking to the door, maybe the neighbor, maybe that neighbor wants to sell the house, but he's seeing how good of a job you're doing that he's like, you know, wow, look at the girl, you know, she's been here like every weekend, she's showing up, I want her to sell my house, she's presentable, she knows what she's doing, she knows the market, they're gonna come to you. Like we have done so many deals just by open houses. So you just have to get to work. There's no easy thing. I'm pretty sure like all of you guys here, like I, I am a workaholic. All my team know this. I work pretty much seven days a week. Um, I love what I do. And, um, and, and 
it's just like putting yourself out there, you know? Love it. Um, the way that I keep up with my clients, I think you guys do a better job than me, to be honest. <laughs> but I try to create a relationship with them, and I'm genuine, like, call them to have conversations about their life. How are your kids doing? I know their kid's name. I know if they're little, I know if they're big, I know if they're going to college, you know. So I just try to be not just their real estate advisor, but also like a friend when they need, you know. And they can count on me for whatever they need. I Love do, it. Melissa, it was great that I'm here with you because okay. I do work with a couple developers now. And um, even like when you work with an investor, like people forget the human touch, you know, like, I sent, um, we do, we, we send like crumble cookies, you know, it's so cheap, but you send to them and they're so happy. They're like, oh my gosh, they call, they send you a picture, they'll post you online, say thank you, like it's an advertising for you, you know? So I had this client, he's an investor, and we closed like a very small deal, and every time I send him a little something. And this time, the, they didn't put my name on, on the gift, right? It was just like some cookies. So he called me, he's like, hey, Fernanda, what are you doing? Like, how you, he didn't know if it was me or no, but he was just calling to, to check on it, you know, because it was like, yeah, that must be her, you know? But he didn't want to say, oh, I got this, was that you? And then he'd be embarrassed if it wasn't me. And he was just like, hey, how are you doing? I'm like, you guys call me because you got my cookies, right? I'm like, yeah, I knew it was you, you know? So those are like little things. And you know, those people that have done several transactions with me, and they're investors, but we're still able to touch them that the competition is really tough out there. But I'll tell you, like most of my clients, they'll be like, you know, Fernanda is my, is my realtor. Like they will wait for me, they will call me because I feel that I create that relationship with them that they just feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And uh, can it's I point out something about all five of these women? It's all in who they're being. It's not just like everyone tells it like, like they're all just being themselves and they're all, and their clients love them for who they are and none of them are hiding who they are. They're extremely, they're all extremely consistent, both in like real estate, but really in like who they are as a person. And it makes it really easy for the people that, you know, are their tribe to, uh, to follow them, I think, and I think that's kind of apparent here. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you guys a different question because this is the number one question we got, and I want to make sure since we're two questions in, and this has been a ton of info, uh, I'm gonna make sure we don't get not get to this question. So I want to hear what you're doing. I'll go to you, Kristen. We'll go all the way down again. What are you doing right in the 2024 market and Q4 market? What are you doing right now to pivot to today's current market? What are your focuses? What are you doing differently? What are you getting back to, those types of things? Um, so we're pretty consistent all the time. Obviously, we got busy, so maybe it scaled down a little bit. But we are very consistent about um, you know, all of our marketing techniques. But I think now, if you were doing at a level 100, it should be 250. Um, if you have time to go to lunch with someone, you should go to lunch with them. Um, everyone touched on calling. No one likes it. <laughs> and it's always the number one thing that comes up. It's like, make sure and call your people. And if it's your sphere, it's people you know and are gonna be excited to talk to you. So we're definitely doing that. Um, as the year is wrapping up, I think everyone sort of settles into, it's like almost the holidays, the year starts fresh. Um, and I know that I am personally trying really hard to stay very aggressive and if it's not productive now, I know I'm teeing myself up for it to be productive when there starts to be a lot of movement again. Um, so I think it's just like not falling into like, this is kind of going slow and I have extra time, so I'll run off and I'll go see this movie today instead of working. I still think it's committing like your full-time attention and hours. And maybe that looks different than when you were running and showing things and writing contracts. Now it's like, intentionally setting appointments to like visit with people or call or make sure you are set up with your systems so that when we start moving a bunch, you have everything in place. So it's all the stuff that when we were busy, we we're like, God, I wish I would have had time to be more organized or to have it um, work a little bit smoother. So it's kind of like a great, Love it. get your house in order. Love it. Mel, how about you? I, I think it's, it's it's different. different. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, we're always pivoting in the commercial sector and, and in the land dealings. We're always having to figure out how to underwrite a deal. So even the good times and the bad times, we're kind of 
touching the, the, the market constantly again. So there's really no downtime. I, I hear in the residential, you know, things start to slow down for the holidays, and, and actually that's the busiest time. I can remember being in New York City with my parents that, that I took and my sister, and I'm literally writing up a deal to close in, in, in 15 days, and it's Christmas. So for me, I love this time. Um, it's about, hey, I, I need to find that 1031 exchange. It's fourth quarter, how I'm gonna close out 2023. What do I have in my pipeline for 2024? Um, you have to be aggressive. There's no downtime. And I'm sorry if you're downtiming, there's no downtime. It's, I haven't, I haven't hit my numbers. I need to get aggressive. What am I going to do different today? I need to reach out to these many people. I need to touch my database. I need to see um, what REITs are out there, who is acquiring, because I, I will share a lot with you on this sector of, of the business scale. We're not slowing down. Um, the, the, the people that have money are going to buy, but they're going to buy at a discount. So you have to pivot with the market, and, and that's what I've done. I've pivoted, and I've, I've, wrote in, I've written some tremendous deals for 2024, and they're going out to 2027. So it's, I already have my pipeline, and what else am I going to fulfill that pipeline and never take for granted when the market shifts? You have to shift with the market. You have to think out of the box, and how am I going to pivot to accommodate the market today? Love it. Someone give Lindsay a mic. <laughs> So I think the, the biggest thing um, that we all need to be doing is just educating people. I think that there's a lot to this market that's very different than anybody that's seen, that's seen before. Um, you know, my, my husband and my mortgage broker and I were talking yesterday, between the two of them, they have over, over 45 years of experience. And I mean, this everything has been very unprecedented. This is slow or like 2008, but it's different. So I think we all just need to learn and educate. And, you know, just if we're educating our clients, like it shouldn't be too slow because, you know, we, if we all know what we're talking about and saying and um, you truly believe what you're saying, I think that that's, that's going to help. Um, I also believe that champions are made in the off season. So I think now is a great time to to do the things like, you know, keeping our house in order and just kind of going back to the basics, like do take that time and, you know, make a list of your past clients and, you know, categorize them like who's, who's given you so much business and, you know, put them in different groups and spend the time, drop something off, take them out to lunch, like do, do different avenues, you know, think of ways you can grow and, you know, that you never had time before to do. And now you might have a little time to do it, so make the time to do it. But you're right, I mean, I'm the first one. I could, I could easily be sidetracked and organize that closet. Uh, my husband likes to call me uh, Dory, so. <laughs> um, but yes, I could, I could easily just, you know, organize that closet, go buy new sheets, you know, do, do stuff like that. But you really have to just stay focused and just remember who you are, what you do, and learn and shift and you know it just it is what it is i haven't i'm i'm the newest out of all you've all been in it you know during the 2008 uh, market i haven't but i've seen firsthand um you know my husband was in it at that time and you know i i did see firsthand what it was like so um i think it's also a matter too of you know being lean like we we talked about you know we just took a hard look at you know everything we've been spending money on and you know, we've cut out like some subscriptions and just stuff you don't really need, need, you know, you kind of, you know, start preparing yourself now and not six months from now. I think we, we all know that, that sales are down, you know, transactions are down, buyers are taking longer, you know, our listings are sitting a little longer. Like, so we, we do know that that is happening. So start preparing for what that looks like from a financial standpoint. Um, yeah, I think. I think that's it. All right. And since she's, whenever someone brings up the cutting, I always like to just reiterate, you want to make sure you're cutting overhead, not marketing. Because a lot of people, they cut their marketing when the things get tight. 
and then they get nothing and then they get stagnant and they stay at nothing and that never really goes forward because they turned off their marketing so abby tell us about how you're prepared for q4 yeah so i mean or and exactly next year. to that point you know like we've cut some of our overhead but i sat down with uh, a marketing and we rolled out our plan and we we're beefing that section up right and just being you know it's uh, everyone always says you got to go back to the basics go back to basics i'm like meanwhile i'm living in the basics that's my world so i've always been in the basics but it's also you got to be more intentional with it right and that's that's where sometimes like Aaron, like what did you see me doing when i was here um, before you right i was in my car making calls right that is what I do so often, but sometimes it's just a checklist and I go through and I make my calls to just be on to the next call and on to the next call, right? And so it's really taking more time with that client, listening more, being more intentional when you do it, not just going through the motions, right? Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's ramping up and ramping up our events again. Um, we always do past client events and, you know, can you tell Other us about events. an event or two that you like? Yeah, so my favorite Who you invite event, and what you do? My absolute favorite event we just did. It was not a past client event. It was actually open for all of y'all. So the next time I do it, bring your clients. It's, a, it's an wait, event Wait, wait, wait. Tell them that everyone. one more time. It's for everyone in this room, correct? It's for everyone. Every real, it's called um, Realtors for Rescues, right? And so it was a dog adoption event. And um, so it was uh, you know, just... I had uh, came to my team one day and I was like, I want to switch up our movie event. I don't want to do it this year. I want to do something totally different. And so we did a dog adoption event. And um, so I had everyone in my office. I was like, anyone bring, like literally take off the part that says Abby Nelson. And we had this cool little logo for Realtors for Rescues. I was like, send it out to your database. We were going to have food trucks. We're going to have this. We're going to have everyone there. And um, I think that's important, you know, as everyone to just come together and, and do good, do good for everyone. You know, cream rises to the top. So if I can help you out, you're going to help me out. I mean, and that's just what I think we, we need to be doing right now. So that, that was my favorite event um, that we've ever done. But we usually do like, you know, bowling events, movie events. Um, I want to do, um, I want to implement a client appreciation, I'm sorry, a referral appreciation event. So we're going to amp up that part this year as well. So um, kind of a strategy to it. If someone refers someone to me, you know, we thank them very pro profusely. Like they get gifting all throughout, you know, right away. You got to acknowledge, acknowledge the referral. Don't wait until it closes. People are like, well, it didn't close. I didn't make anything off of it. No, immediately you get a referral, you thank them, you gift them for that, right? And then all throughout. And so what I'm going to start to do is um, have like a, a little ticket system where every month we're thanking anyone throughout the year who's referred us. And so they get a ticket into that pot. And then at the end of the year, we're going to do a big gift giveaway, just thanking everyone for, you know, showing their support for me and referring me. And so we're just kind of doubling down on those types of things. And um, that's, that's our strategy. Love it. Fernanda, what do you do in the pivot for Q and to prepare for next year? I feel like I'm playing catch up because I had a baby at the beginning of the year, so I already took my slow time off. Um, but I'm catching up on my numbers. I'm like getting to work every day, calling my clients. And the one thing, like Melissa was saying, like the market shifts and you have to shift with the market. You know, like there's still lots of realtors that are doing amazing business, brand new agents that just started, you know, that they're closing deals. and for me, like, I'm every day, I take the MLS so serious or, you know, LoopNet, whatever is the source that you're going to, to find out what is out there. And I can tell you, like, I memorize <laughs> everything that's on the market. And if I know that I have a client that, oh, one day he mentioned to me, oh, you know, I like this neighborhood or, you know, I'd like to buy a condo to invest or whatever. I'll just send it to them. Hey, you know, I thought about you. This hit the market. Just wanted to share that with you. Just a text message. They might reply to you, they might not, but you'll be surprised how many people will get back to you and be like, hey, do you, I talked to my husband. Do you think we can go ahead and see it? Like, you have to look for the opportunities and present them to your clients and not wait them to come to you. And uh, no November and December are my busiest time because a lot of Asians, they take the time off. I'm hustling. 
I'm getting my numbers there. I am, you know, preparing for the next year. And think about it. Like right now, everything you do by the end of the year, pretty much you're going to close only next year. Yep. So you're really like making yourself ready for 2024. Absolutely. 2023, it's, it's gone. almost gone. <laughs> Unless, you know, if you pick up your phone right now and start calling these people and be like, hey, yep. let's get this sold. This is an amazing deal. So you have to be able to identify what is a good What's a good deal, a good opportunity for your client? And just present it to them. Don't wait. Because that's what everyone here is doing. You know, and just hustling. Put yourself out there. Every contact that you make now, the new ones, they might not be ready to buy by December and close by December. So it's going to be a next year contact. You have to create your pipeline. Love it. That get to the point that people are going to call you and you'll be like, how did they get my number? You know, this is all the work that I have been put in for the last six months. Let's, and, let's uh, stay with you for a second. Can, mm -hmm. I, can I jump to the next one? Yes, absolutely. Tell us about what your – if each of you could briefly tell us what your day-to-day -day looks like. Talk about your daily schedule and your weekly schedule because some, some of you are more like weekly routine and some of you are more daily routines. Give us a yeah. quick breakdown. My day-to-day -day is insane. I get about like 80 calls a day. I do – I am a believer that you have to answer your phone. So I try to answer every phone call that I get. If you text me, <laughs> sometimes it's too many texts. I might be. Sometimes it takes me a while to get back the pen. But um, I have two daughters. One, she's eight months old, and the other one is five. So I have to. My eight month doesn't let me sleep. She wakes up every three hours at night. So sometimes I'm a zombie. Um, and I feel some of you guys can relate because you know we as a mom it's so hard to be this badass business and still be a mom. Like this morning, my daughter's like, can you take me to school? And then I was like, my gosh, I'm going to be late to this event. And I was like, of course, I'm going to take you to school because, you know, like they are my priority, right? Um, and um, I don't know, I get emotional to talk about. It. So my day to day gets so crazy. Like I usually put, you know, I have my, my girls at the office, my assistant, and I usually put everything on my calendar. It can be like a closing day, inspection time, Everything. When a, uh, I get a contract signed, everything goes to my calendar. So I know exactly, you know, it's, it's easy to lose a track of, you know, like inspection period, diligences, closing day, like long commitments, because you have to be on top of your business, right? So everything goes to my calendar. And, you know, I put all my meetings into my calendar, and I, it's just like going from one to the next, to the next, to the next. And, and, and we just go okay. to the next day. And then I feel like I don't have a lot of time to, to plan, to be honest, because I feel like I am so busy all the time. I love being busy. Um, there are things that I'm good at it, that it is, you know, I'm very direct love to the it. point. I, I'm fast, but I'm not good in planning. So, so I delegate this. So to what we're my hearing assistants. is you put everything in the calendar, and that keeps you slammed, and you run everything from the calendar, start to finish, basically, yeah, exactly. and find a way to juggle yes. being a mom mm -hmm. and everything else. Yes, so. uh huh. Love it, Abby. How about you? Tell us about what your day to day looks like. Yeah, so pretty pretty routine person over here. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's um, you know I drop my kids off. Uh, Park Maitland, and go to the office, which is literally across the street. On my way then, I'm literally listening to something that, um, usually it's something motivational, right? Something that helps me, and I put something into perspective. It's not always motivational, but it helps me feel grateful. Something that makes me feel like, ha, ah, so that's how I want to start my day, usually. Right on. Um, so then when I get into the office, I, <laughs> wash out my coffee cup I got it from the previous day but the first thing I do when I sit down is I um, bring out my gratitude journal and I, I love and it's mostly forcing myself right like every day no matter what um, I force myself because sometimes you have to force yourself to think of something you're grateful for so every day I have to write three things that I'm grateful for I have to write one thing I'm letting go of and I have to write what I'm going to focus on for the day and um, thank you. And uh, then I kind of, right now, I'm new assistant to starting on Monday, so right now it's me checking my emails, going through, you know, catching up on some things. We have a daily team meeting from 9 to 
Um, after 9.30, it's usually a little bit of chit chat in the office, you know, everyone's really social. And so then it's uh, me getting, uh, getting started with my calls. Then I have my appointments throughout the day, then back to calls, then appointments, then back to calls, and then I mention calls, and then I might have some showings, and then back to calls literally in my driveway until I'm hanging up my phone, walking in, try to walk in at 7 She was on calls when I pulled up to in the parking lot here at Enzion. I mean, it's... That's, that's what, about, what about weekly? Because I'm going to guess that yeah. your calls follow a routine. Yeah. Week to week, you have certain days for certain things, I'm going to assume, because Maybe. I think we've talked Just about this slightly. before. Yeah. Can you share with everyone how you break down your week? Yeah, so Monday, it's reaching out to, like, my VIP people, right? Like, um, so my sphere, my VIP people, um, people that I'm in business with. Tuesday, it's my transactional day. So if you're a client of mine, you get a call every single Tuesday. Like, no matter what, they're like, oh, it's Tuesday. Thanks, Abby. You know, <laughs> so it just every Tuesday, it's my client calls. Obviously, if I get new leads, those are called, you know, in the moment and throughout the day and, you know, day one, day two, day three, et cetera. On Wednesdays, it's a leads day. So every Wednesday, when, so Tuesdays are my longer call days because every client's going to answer, right? Wednesdays are my higher volume of call days. Um, I mean, I'm usually at right around uh, 100 to uh, 150 sometimes calls every Wednesday. Uh, Thursdays are my past client days, so those are my, my, more my fun days now. I, and they didn't start off as fun. Those were the hardest days for me when I first, first started doing them. Like, I've had to, I would say I'm an introvert who's had to learn how to play the role of an extrovert, right? I've had to force myself into doing things that I don't like to do, and then over time, yeah, actually kind of, I don't like to admit it, but I kind of start to like doing some of them, right? So those Thursday calls, my past client calls, those are just my catch-up days with my past clients. And even those are systemized or systematized, right? Like it's alphabetical, you know, all throughout the year, birthdays, anniversaries, everyone always gets a call from me. Um, Fridays, um, supposed to be going after new business. It's usually kind of a catch-up day for me. <laughs> And uh, Saturdays and Sundays, I have my mental sanity and I go on really long, really fast, really competitive bike rides in the mornings. Love it. Lindsay, tell us about your daily and or weekly schedule. Uh, well, like Fernanda, I have a little one. She's two. So my day starts off by, you know, kind of blending family and, and business. Um, like this morning, I had to wake her up at, you know, six and I told her that I had to speak today. So she has to get up. <laughs> But no, she did, and that was good. Um, but no, so I think on a daily basis, I mean, the first thing I do when I, when I, after I work out, take a shower, get dressed, sit at the computer, I mean, my email's the first thing that comes up. So go through all that. Um, I see what I, you know, need to still do from the day before, do that. Um, I need to get better at planning. Uh, my, <laughs> my day to day, um, however, if it's on my calendar, it will get done. So, you know, start blocking off time. Um, I have started doing that to call my past clients. Um, obviously, you're doing things throughout the day. Yesterday, I was at a new home orientation with a client. Um, you know, then just, you know, talking with other, you know, spheres, like I, uh, my broker, broker husband and mortgage broker uh, about the market and stuff. So trying to schedule in some more time to to learn and you know educate yourself like i said before um weekly i think i need, honestly i mean this is i need to just start putting something down on paper and just saying okay this is what i'm going to do i really like your monday tuesday like how you have different days for different things um i think if you can st i think with everything you do you should probably start small and you know actually uh, set forth a goal that you think you can achieve um, but pretty much, I mean, all throughout the day, I mean, it's just, it's talking to current clients, it's calling past clients, it's, you know, working on some marketing, whether that be like a newsletter, some cards, um, you know, like I said, kind of putting, putting my clients into, into groups and, you know, reaching out different ways to different clients and um, start thinking about, you know, brainstorming on how you can grow and you can, you know, take this opportunity to, you know, take the end of the year to go ahead and make it a good, successful 2024. Love it. Melissa. 
I just have to say, Abby, you and I vibe on the whole morning thing that basically it's the same. I think um, my day to day starts uh, early in the morning and I'm not gonna get into the baby thing because I don't have a baby, but I do have uh, some pets and so they are my babies. But you know, I get up at seven in the morning and it, from seven to 11, it's called me time. And that me time is to take care of my mental state, my, my, my mind, body and soul. And if you do that, you can manifest your day-to-day -day operation. So that's my time with God. That's my time listening to motivation, how I'm gonna make it today, how I'm gonna succeed tomorrow. So in the morning, it's my morning runs, strategizing, thinking out of the box, how I'm gonna get this deal to the table, come back home, reset and eat, or if I'm training that day uh, for, for whatever reason, um, my day starts at 11 and it's taken me 20 years to say do not call me before 11 o'clock because this is my time and it's my personal time and I think honestly you have to do that because this this will drive you crazy with and, and with all respect it will push you to your limits so there has to be a time where you go this is my family time this is my spiritual time and this is my mental time so my day-to-day -day looks like that it looks at I write everything down and I actually have a vision board and I look at my vision board every single day and I manifest this is what I need to do for 2023. This is where I'm at in 2024 and this is my vision for my five years out. So that is my daily, daily look in and looking out into the future to manifest how am I gonna be up here speaking to my colleagues, my mentors, um, what my daily operation is, and then I get into the hustle and bustle of every single day of how I'm gonna fill that pipeline and where is the pipeline and, 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 and touching daily my clients to say, okay, here's where I'm at on inspections, this is what I need to do to get it to, to, to planning and zoning, here I need to call my client, oh, today I'm going in a truck with an 89-year-old and looking at 400 acres and he's driving, so you know, <laughs> I better have insurance. Um, but with that, that said, I, I, I do love the fact that um, Abby said you really have to be grateful and thankful and 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 I think if once you are you're gonna appreciate where you're at and in, in your journey in, in the real estate industry so that's my day-to-day -day of, of, of looking at love my it. calendar manifesting having a vision board I really believe you do need a vision board because when you write it and you see it you can achieve it yeah love it and be, be careful what you put on it because you might get exactly what you put. Absolutely. I once put and something it about been. it had a picture. I've cut it out of my own mag. We were, all the people were cutting around and they were cutting my magazine. I was like, oh, it's me. I was like, I'm going to put me on my vision board. That's right. And I cut something that I randomly found and it said the brain of the boss. And I don't know why I cut that and put it in, but I put the brain of the boss. And then I had a brain injury like a month later, two months later. So throwing that out there because be careful what you put on your vision board because it might happen. I've got, I've got numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I learned the hard way. Kristen, tell us, uh, tell us about your day today and your week to week. Sure. So I tend to operate um, mom math and work backwards. So I really try to plan the quarter ahead of time. Um, marketing and branding is probably the biggest part of where I try to differentiate myself. So, you know, if you're going to duck or if you're gonna do anything like that, it just doesn't happen quickly. Um, so I like to plan out the quarter of what, you know, are my cards gonna look like? What are my gifts? What activity or event am I hosting? Um, and really block that off for the quarter. And then daily and weekly, I at least, it's a moving target always, you know, you can have the best plans for the day. And that's when you'll get all the calls to go show and list and do all those things. And that stuff sort of falls to the wayside. So I like to have the big picture in place so that when there's a free moment and you sit down, you're like, okay, that's next week, I ordered this, what do I need now? Um, to just try and keep everything performing at a peak level. Um, I do very weird stuff. <laughs> so it takes a little while to put all of that together and kind of plan. Love it. All right. How many of you learned something from these ladies so far? Make some noise. 
So I'm still gonna have one question, but I want to make a quick couple quick announcements. The first one is make sure you pull out your phone and go to masterclasscfl.com because the first 75 tickets are free next month, and 40 of them were taken before today's session started. This room has over 100 people, so there should be none left. And if there are some left, you should grab them right now. And then the tickets will be 10 bucks a piece. It goes to the Movember Foundation. Today's funds will all go to. Gina McReynolds Foundation Team Gina. So uh, if you want to make a donation, you can go to paypal.me slash Orlando Real Producers. Or go, it, you probably won't be able to find the Eventbrite because I switched the page. So, uh, But if you can figure out how to get back to the Eventbrite, you can donate there too. Um, we, do, we raised at least $1,000 plus whatever you guys sent me that I haven't checked yet. And uh, I have one more question for you all in a second. But I do want to say, can we give a round of applause to the Enzion for hosting us here? They are a non-profit organization. They are independent theater. And what's really cool is they've got an awesome restaurant. So if you really want to say thank you, or if you want to keep the networking going, because there's some awesome people in this room that you probably should connect with, I invite you to join us in the Eden Bar for the best burgers in town. They also have other good food, but the best burger in town. It won an award from Orlando Weekly. But right outside, the ambiance is awesome. A whole bunch of us always stick around. So hopefully, a lot of you will stick around, join us. And if you can't stick around, but you happen to have cash and you want to tip a bartender for sticking around and getting here early, that'd be sweet, but don't feel obligated. So anyway, I'm going to ask these ladies one more question, but can we give them all a round of applause to them, all of our sponsors, everyone that came out? Make sure you join us next month. But uh, the question I want to ask you all, uh, because we didn't really get to it, it's kind of a strange one, and this wasn't on my list, so sorry if I surprised anybody. I want to hear just the number one thing that you think made the difference when you scaled to, like, the next level. Like, what in your business over the years, like, all of you are doing 40, 50 million plus. So, like, what was the number one decision, change, whatever it was, that took you from being a, a average producer, let's say a 10 or 20 million, to, like, top in the very in the whole market you get what i'm trying to say what took you from like 10 20 million to 40 50 million is really what i'm asking and uh what made the change for you let's start with you fernanda left button one more time just hit it once there you go for me i think it was to believe in myself that was the number one thing you know, sometimes we go sit on tables that we might not think that we deserve to be there, but we do. Especially, I feel like being a woman with an accent and, you know, like doing all this business. And I remember like last year, when I, went, when I won the, the broker of the year, I, you know, I was pregnant with a belly, but I was so proud of myself to be over there. And the number one thing is put in your mind that you can do it and you believe in yourself and you deserve to be there. You deserve that listing. There's no better agent than you. And you're gonna do the best for your client. And you're gonna tell them that. You're gonna look into his face and be to his eyes and be like, you know, I'm gonna be the best agent for you on this transaction. Believe in yourself and get it done. The other thing that I feel that it made I used to be like a control freak, and it was so hard for me to delegate. And I remember, like, I didn't have a transaction coordinator. And I was like, uh, telling, like, handling my transaction to someone, like, it's crazy. I, I like to be on top of it. Of course, we have an amazing uh, TC. She's actually here with me today because she's everything for me. Like, she, she talks to my client like she's an extended of myself, you know, all my clients love her and trust her with, you know, like sometimes if they, they give me a call and if I, I don't answer them right away, they know that they can call her and she'll be able to handle whatever their questions, you know, they have about that transaction. So hire someone that will be an extension of you because it gets crazy and it's overwhelmed, you know, and sometimes you just... You, you can't think, so you need somebody to back you up. That's it. Yeah, so for me, it, it, delegation, right? Like, I'm a perfectionist, and so sometimes that's hard to give things up, but that's, that was the freeing moment. Um, I had a coach one time tell me, he's like, Abby, sometimes you have to learn that good is good enough. And when you're a perfectionist, that's a hard pill to swallow, but, you know, what I've also learned is once you do give it to someone and they get really good at it, then they exceed where you were at that level, right? 
I mean, my team loves all my clients in a level that it's just not my personality to, to have those relationships. And so they take it to that next level. And that's huge. But then... Isn't that how you know you have the right people, too? A hundred percent. But then it's my responsibility to take good care of them. And that is what I think, you know, because I'm... Like, I'm the type where I come into the office and I, I, this is on my mind and I forget to say, hey, hey, guys, how you, I mean, I like literally go right to it sometimes. <laughs> and so it's really just learning how to take really good care of them, be there for them, support them, help them in their own personal development, not just work life. And that helps elevate you next level. Love it. All right. <laughs> Lindsay? So honestly, I think it's time. I think your actions over time compound and everything that you've been working for, you've, I don't know, you just, what, what you're working for today, what you're building today helps for tomorrow. And I think that's the most important thing to kind of take away from this year and the market shift um, is just basically like you really have to put the time in today to reap it tomorrow. And I think that's, that's where that turning point was for me, um, I also think too the more the more experience you get, and the more the more your clients do appreciate you, and and you you are doing a good job, it becomes easier to believe in yourself. Like because at the beginning, you you know when you're first starting out, like you know you don't know until you've reached a point where you're like, wow, like you know these people are referring me. I mean, the referrals are the greatest compliment you can ever have. And if people are truly referring you, like you're, you are doing something right. And I think all that like really just plays a part into uh, believing in yourself, which in turn helps you take it to that next level. So, yeah. Love it. Melissa, what, what made the difference for you? I'd, I'd like to reiterate what you just said, Fernanda, that you, you really have to believe in yourself, right? Um, I was with a company and, and, and Rockmail and Investments just started three years ago. And um, my business has, has doubled because I believe that I could venture out and start my company. And so where I was doing 20 million and here I am in funky and pink and wearing my sneakers, I became the role as a rock star. And at first I was really shy and now I wear it. I'm not shy because I believe in myself. I've manifested it. I know I can achieve it. And so I think you have to believe in, in, in what you're doing and people will follow you. It's not the company's name. It's not if you're with a, 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 a big luxury real estate. It's what you're delivering to them and they have faith in you and they believe that you are the best broker for them. Your business will follow you. I mean, look, 20 million now, 40, 50. And, and like you said, the vision board, Aaron, be careful what you wrote on I, that I, vision I learned. board. Because okay. now it's, hey, I'm, I'm up almost to 50 million and I'm a one woman show. So imagine if I bring on a team what we can accomplish. So again, going back to that, that you, you started and, and, and your accent and being Brazilian, you know how many Brazilian clients I have? It's because of the collaboration that I've did with Legacy Plus Realty because they're in Southern Florida on, in the South and they're in Miami and they have a huge presence in Brazil. So thank you for the, the Brazilian connection. Um, again, you have to collaborate and you have to believe in yourself. And, and once you do, you'll manifest it and, and get that vision board going. Because honestly, that's where it's going to come. You, you, you have to manifest. Love it. Love it. Kristen? They were wonderful. They did a great job. Um, By the way, real fast, before she gives this last answer, everyone here that hasn't already taken a picture and posted and tagged us and put hashtag Masterclass CFL and all that stuff, make sure you take something. Or if not, shoot a photo with a friend when this thing's over. Tag us. In fact, we'll give away, I don't know, let's give away... Uh, Let's give, we'll give away $400 worth of some real producer swag. I won't go through all of it now, but to people that tagged us or posted it, we'll find you. All you got to do is post it, tag us. Kristen, let's bring them home. Um, so I would just say quality of life for me as things started to get more insane. I was doing it all and delegating is um, so important and it's hard because we're in a control environment. We want it to go our certain way. Um, but for me, someone had a conversation with me about what is your time worth? And we figured out, you know, how much I worked and, you know, what my net was. And 
every time, uh, is this a $500 activity for you to go do for the hour? So I really started outsourcing anything that wasn't something that I'm great at. Um, and it really made it where I got to do the things that I enjoyed and I was good at. Um, the other items were getting done and it just freed up a lot of mental space to be a mom or a person or um, you know, just not get burnt out because it's very easy. <laughs> so that's my two cents. Have somebody wash your laundry. Love it. <laughs> With that, let's give a giant round of applause to all of our panelists <laughs> and all the sponsors. Make sure you grab your phone and go to masterclasscfl.com. Sign up for la next month, which is the last session of the year. We don't do December. So you're going to want to make sure that you come out and join us for the November edition. And stick around and join us for lunch. We would love to connect with you if we haven't met or if you haven't met with the ladies that do stick around. I won't make them all stay and meet everybody. But anyone that wants to connect with anyone, do it now. Thank you guys for coming out. And uh, appreciate you guys. And one more time, thanks to Dave Stewart and his team, T. Stewart Productions. Hey, Dave, can we get one photo of the ladies really quick? We're going to get one photo once he pulls that camera up. And uh, that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you.